All right, it's 345, we'll get started. Welcome to Citing Sources, Tools and Resources. I'm Corey Dahl, and with me today is... Molly Ashup and Jill Bake. And today we're going to talk about several ways of citing various sources and how that ties into digital citizenship and even show you uh, where you can get some lesson plans for your classroom. Let's get started. I think first up today we have Molly talking about citations within World Book Web. Um, yes, I want to talk to you about um, World Book Web offers you a great opportunity to cite sources that you're using in your research or your students are using. And this is really important because part of digital citizenship is being responsible um, for giving credit to other people's work, um, not copying something or what we call um, paying attention to copyright. So if you would go to the ESU 8 homepage, which is just www.esu 8.org. Um, on the front, we've kind of revamped our home page, and you see the World Book Web icon. That's what you would click on. And I am just going to show you one tiny piece of World Book Web. If you see something there that looks interesting or you'd like to know more about World Book Web, please contact any of us um, that are doing this webinar today, and we would be happy to show you how to use the whole um, World Book Web site. You click on World Book Web, and these are all the modules that are part of it, but I'm going to talk about um, the citation builder that is in the advanced. So you would need to click on um, this little A advanced module icon. And then on the left hand side, part way down, you see this where it says Citation Builder. That's what you would click, and it would bring up this page here, and it's going to ask you from a pull-down menu what you want to cite. And you can see from this list, you can cite about everything that you would probably be pulling um, research or information from. So we're just going to put, we're going to cite a website and push Submit. And then it's going to ask you information about, um, in this case, the website. So this is an article. comes from CNN. And if you see, once I clicked on the article, it gives a lot of this information that I'm going to need right here in the heading under the article. Then you come over here and you fill in the author's first name, their last name. This one also has another author, so you put in their name. You can continue adding. Um, click here, we're, we're citing a website, and we're not citing the organization. We're going to actually cite the, the um, article itself. I put in the title of the article and where it came from. And, and Molly, there are some things at the bottom that we didn't include in the screenshot, okay. like the date it was viewed things like that. So you're not seeing the whole thing here. I just wanted to make sure we're listening to that. All right, so you just need to fill in the information right. that comes up here. This is the, you get the general idea of how you do that. You would click Submit, and then, voila, like magic, it cites it in MLA, APA, and Harvard. And then obviously you have these different um, choices here. But this is a good way then to copy that and, and put it in your research um, so everything is cited properly. If you've got junior high and high school students, this is an excellent tool. They have access to it. If you don't know how they have that access, please contact one of us. Um, but they can go in and for any type of research they're doing, they can use the citation builder. So Molly, if a student were reading um, a novel, they could put that information into that citation builder and it would come up with this citation for that too. Right. In that drop down mm -hmm. menu they would just choose a book and then they would need to fill in the information that it needs for citing a book. So it doesn't just have to be an online No, it resource. can be any resource. Oh. 
Okay, so on World Work Web, you can find a lot of other great information. And if you would search for it in the search box, or you would just click on one of them, like this one, if I clicked on the Homestead Act article, it gives you the article. And if you would scroll down through the article to the bottom, it would show that it cites that article in those different um, styles. Now, Molly, you didn't have to tell it to do this. It just does it, correct? That is correct. Everything in WorldBook is cited. I will even show you here on the next slide that if you go all the way down to the lowest level of the WorldBook, the WorldBook Kids, everything there is cited. Here's just an article on government. And if I would scroll to the bottom of it, it would also have that article cited. The pictures are cited. The videos are cited. Everything in WorldBook already has the citations formed. Or if you are finding something that's not in WorldBook, you can go to that citation builder and <clears throat> um, build your own citation there. Also here, there's an arrow to this help. And um, if you click on that, it kind of just goes through and explains the different styles and how those citings, um, how to cite according to those styles. So it's just a little bit of a help guide there. All right, I got a little poll. Can I do my poll now? All right, for everyone that is on, if you'd like to take this poll quick before we go on um, about World Book Web, um, we'll look at the answers at the end of the um, webinar. Good. That's right. It is no cost to service units uh, 8 or 1, 2, uh, actually, 7, sure. 8, and 17. 7, 8, and 17. So it is free to those people. So two doesn't have service it. units Sorry. purchase it. So mm -hmm. that's a good thing. All right, next. I'm going to talk about Google Images um, and how to search within Google Images. And I'm looking for um, items that are free to use, that are not copyrighted, Jill, because I so many times I think people automatically go to um, Google and just take images in, in, in that probably shouldn't be done. It certainly should. Right. So everyone has searched within Google. So I thought I'd type in Minions, because that seems to be a recent topic, and a lot of people like those pictures. I bet you there are some pictures out there on the web that are copywritten. So I just did a normal search, and I'm, I have selected images. So I'm looking at all the pictures. Now, what I want to point out is how to use Google um, to search for uh, pictures of minions, in this case, that are free to use. So the second, short, the second step of this, after selecting images, I need to come over here to Search Tools. And by cl clicking on Search Tools, then I'm able to see this Usage Rights. Okay. And by default, I think it's always just on not filtered by license. I'm sure that that is the way it is. And I'm not sure, honestly, if you can set that as a different. I just think that's the default. So what that means, Corey, is that if I do a search, search. for a certain image and I haven't gone into the usage rights, that the images that I'm seeing there might not be labeled for reuse. I, right. might, I might not actually be able to use them right. legally. They're, right, they're copywritten and you could sure. get in trouble. Right, okay. so this is part of this digital citizenship thing that uh -huh. we're talking about is yeah. how to um, cite properly, like Molly talked about, uh, if you don't know how to use that citation builder, but also just use Google and search for pictures that are labeled for reuse. So you need to change it to, uh, in this case, I think I chose labeled for reuse with modification, which means I can use it, but I can also modify it, I believe is what I did here, or just labeled for reuse or so on. Mm -hmm. These are also very familiar, or uh, very similar to Creative Commons, which I'm going to talk about next. Okay, So I did change it, then I searched, and what I found, I found this picture here. Of, uh, there were many, but this is the one I selected. And I zoomed in here on the right, and a good practice in this, when you find that picture, is to actually visit the page that it says it's come from. And I noted this at the bottom, so I'm actually practicing this at the same time, giving it credit where I found this picture. Mm -hmm. But I actually click on this visit page, because I want to go out to see it and see what rights have been assigned to it. When I did that, 
it went out to to another page. And then down at the bottom, this is what I want you to start looking for is this CC, which means Creative Commons. And, and that doesn't help a whole lot if you don't know what Creative Commons means. But then when you click on Creative Commons, it will describe for you what you can do with it. So, so my first clue is Creative Commons means this person says, you can use this. But I'm not sure to what extent that I can use it. So mm -hmm. if you see this, this is a good sign. So then when I click on this, and I will zoom in, you get a page like this. And what this page shows you here is the right that that certain person has given this picture. Now let me zoom in a little bit. So this person who took this picture and posted it and said it's okay for you to use it, um, the, the default is this sign right here, attribution. Basically, the people are saying, if you use this, that is fine. Just you know, provide a link back to it. Give me credit because since I took it, I'm not asking for any money, you know, and those sorts of things. So this is the basic Creative Commons one uh, setting. Just give me credit. But now it also says uh, here that I can copy it and I can redistribute it. Just give me credit. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can even adapt it. I can even change it even commercially in this case. So they could even use it and sell it somehow as long as this person gets credit. Now later I'm going to show you one that says that, that you cannot uh, a, a change it or you cannot make money off of it. So just keep this in mind that this is the basic level. Okay, so now let's go into Creative Commons. Since I was referring to that back on the, I'll go back one page or, or a couple here. Down at the bottom Right here, this is Creative Commons symbol. So I'm going to just talk briefly about what Creative Commons means. Go forward again. So if you do decide to search using Creative Commons, go to search.creativecommons.org. A lot of people, including myself, often I just go to creativecommons.org and I look around and it doesn't look right. But the key here is putting that search at the beginning. So these screenshots, again, were taken from search.creativecommons.org. All right, step one, I decided to, in this case, uh, type in just the word bananas. So that's step one, is just typing that in. Then I came down here on step two, and I don't want to use it for commercial purposes, so I just uncheck that. Now, I just want to either use it or modify it or adapt it. Okay, and then I've decided to search Flickr, because that last image that we were on, Flickr, if you're not familiar with that, is a website that people load pictures on. Typically, but not all in all cases, use it for sharing purposes. Um, but they're not always using Creative Commons. Some, some definitely copyright it. It's basically a photo storage place. Okay, so step one, type in bananas. I want to modify it, and I'm choosing Flickr. Then upon hitting enter or return, it goes out to Flickr, and it's searched everywhere throughout Flickr that has pictures that somebody has labeled bananas and that, I, that are free to use. Now I found this one here and again I'm practicing by making sure that I'm noting where I found it here at the bottom. It's an extremely long link. But now notice down at the bottom of this picture here it says some rights reserved. Now this is the familiar one. This one is for everyone. This is well, I meaning um, Creative Commons. This is basic. This means just give me credit. That little person. Now this next one over here means, with the no dollar sign, that means you cannot use this commercially. See how that was different from the last one? Well, that last one just says, just had this first symbol and says basically use it. You can even sell it. I mean, use it commercially if you want and do those sorts of things. This next one over says um, that you can also change it. So some rights are reserved. But again, the, the key here was if you're not sure what those mean, you click on it. Now here's how here's the difference. It says you can share and adapt, but here are these three symbols. If you're not sure what they mean, you can definitely look here. So attribute, that means give credit. You cannot sell it. It says you may not use this for commercial purposes. So if you want to use it in the classroom, that's fine on your website, but you're not going to sell it. You can't put it on teachers share of teachers or whatever that is. Teachers pay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And share alike means you can remix it, you can transform it, you can do other sorts of things, and you can even share it and move it on, but you have to use this same license. I can't take this picture and modify it slightly and then sell it. He's saying, in this case, you can use it, but you can't totally change it and then start charging money for it, if that makes sense. As far as Creative Commons licenses go, if you go to creativecommons.org slash licenses, and here's the link there, 
and I won't go through all these, but I do want to point out that on each one, you do have that same symbol of the person that is basically saying you do have to, at a minimum, give me credit for my, my picture or whatever it is. But each, each one has a different scenario. So you might want to spend some time looking through that. And talk to your kids about what these Creative Commons licenses mean. So can anyone upload a picture to Creative Commons? Um, you know, I think you can. I, I personally have uploaded to Creative Commons, but I have uploaded to Flickr, Flickr. and I've applied uh -huh. the Creative Commons license. So it's more of an awareness. Um, when you upload it, you can now, you basically have the ability to set these licenses how you wish. Okay. All right. Next. Common Sense Media. Now, if you need some ideas or don't know how to talk to kids about this or just wondering what questions to ask or terminology, Common Sense Media has lessons plans for you, and Jill is going to talk about that. Okay. Thank you. Common Sense Media um, information can be found at the commonsensemedia.org website, um, which is right up here. So if you go to the website, this is the information that you will find. It's just jam-packed full of lots and lots of information. What we're going to focus on today is the information that is right here specifically for educators. But this is a great site to uh, send parents to. Um, for information about uh, apps and games and movies and books and all kinds of information. Today our focus is on um, citation. So we're going to look at education. And under education, you have a, a drop-down menu where you can highlight digital citizenship. And when you do that, then you come to another drop-down menu and we will select so scope and sequence. And when you click on Scope and Sequence, this is all of um, the tools and the lessons that they have. There's internet safety, privacy and security, et cetera. You can read the eight different categories of information. Today we're going to focus on this one, which is creative credit and copyright. You see that there is a, a symbol there, uh, very similar to the uh, Creative Commons. It has the C in there for creative credit and copyright. So we will look at that and um, we're going to focus on that symbol again. We can highlight creative credit and copyright. And when we do, in this list that we just looked at, it will highlight the ones that have that yellow symbol. So if we look here at this picture, you can see how this part is grayed in. And we know that that symbol was beside my creative work. There will be a list of um, lesson plans for lower elementary, grades five th or three through five, six through eight, and high school. Each one of the lesson plans has an introduction and different units, plus a closing. There's also a list of key vocabulary words and the ability to download the lesson. So a teacher can come in, download the lesson materials, and here's an example of one of the worksheets that is available for a lower elementary student when they're looking at um, giving somebody credit for creating artwork. Now, Jill, there's one thing that I want to point out with downloading lesson materials. If you're on Common okay. Sense Media, you do have to create a free account for a teacher to be able to download. That's right. Thank you for mentioning that. So it's a free, it doesn't cost anything, but you have to create a password and a username, and then you can download materials. Great. Thank you. Here's an example of a lesson for senior high on the topic of copyrights and wrongs. How can I make responsible choices when I use other people's creative work? Again, downloading the lesson materials will lead you to this lesson plan. And you can see that there's essential questions. There's a lesson overview. Here's a standards alignment. Um, down further on this uh, same page would be the vocabulary. If we click on the introduction, you can see that there's a warm-up, there's questions to ask. Then there were, I think, three or four different les uh, teaching lessons. And this is uh, lesson number one, what are the ways you can be respectful of people's creative work. Also within the lesson plans will be student worksheets. 
Um, I especially like this one because this one involves the use of photographs and it talks about Creative Commons and There's Flickr. There's Flickr. Yes, yeah. it uses Flickr, right? And it uses Flickr. There's a, a series of about. Um, Oh, I don't know, seven or eight photographs here. And then there's also um, the teacher's guide over to the side. So there we go. I lost my mouse for a minute there. OK, so there's the, the student worksheet here. And then the teacher's guide, which gives the guidance as you help students work through all of the materials. Another resource um, that is available for teachers to use with students that has been covered in a previous uh, webinar last year is called EverFi, and the program is Ignition. This one is specifically for students in grades 6 through 9. And you'll notice that there is um, a, a section on conducting online research. What makes EverFi a little unique is that it's a gaming simulation. So it's very, very interactive for students not just worksheets, but it's interactive and they can earn badges. Um, right. And Jill, I would like to say that both Common Sense Media and EverFi are free to teachers to use. Um, they're made available and they're excellent resources. So I would hope that teachers would take advantage of both of them. Should we do a poll? Sure. Or Let's do a poll. I'm pulling this poll. And Absolutely. And opening it. And I know you covered it, so let's look at it. OK. I need to do this to download lessons from Common Sense Media. Let's have a vote here. And we could say also to download lessons from EverFi. Yeah, also. you have to create an account there, too. There we go. We'll broadcast our results. Good. Yes, each one of them uh, require a free account. But the resources are just awesome. So I do not have to buy a puppy? You do not have to buy a puppy. And you, don't, and you don't need a master's degree in chemical engineering either. If you'd like to learn more about either um, Common Sense Media or EverFi, you can go to the ESU8 webpage, as Molly referenced before. Click on this red box, which will take you to the Wednesday webinar information. And on that link, is another link where it says, watch last year's webinars by clicking right here. And there's um, a long list. There is one webinar that was on EverFi and one on Common Sense Media. So if you're interested in learning more, go there or contact one of the three of us. We have one more poll. Let's see and see how we do it. Let's open the poll. It says, so if you want to share your creation, consider using blank. A printer, Creative Commons, green construction paper, a convertible. Well, everything done with a convertible has got to be better. Right, right. So I, I do not need a convertible nor a puppy to do any of this. Okay. <laughs> Just helps. Just helps. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. Please do let us know, like Molly said earlier, if you need us to help you work through any of these issues or explain how to get to World Look Web and how your students can access that, um, please let us know because we would love for you to be using it with your students. Thank you. Hey, thank you.